Hello and welcome. My name is Samer Audi, and in this lesson, I will give you a practical example of how to develop data flow diagrams. Uh, when creating a data flow diagram, there are uh, three main steps. Step one, you draw the context diagram of the system. Then, based on the context diagram, you expand it into diagram zero. And then, from diagram zero, you choose uh, any process or more and detail it in uh, lower level diagrams. In this example, I will uh, talk about an online car rental system. Of course, um, uh, to explain to you and so that you understand, I'm providing snapshots of the system. In reality, however, at this point of the uh, system analysis uh, process, you don't know how the system looks like, okay? Uh, but you should be able to uh, imagine it, to picture it in your mind so that you know the inputs, the outputs, and so on. Uh, remember that this would come later in the design process where you would design something like this. So basically, we're looking at a website uh, for a car rental company, and it's a dynamic website that allows the customers to rent cars online. The first step, of course, uh, in the system analysis phase is to collect the system requirements. At this point, you talk to people, you perform fact-finding, uh, you research, and you find out the characteristics of your system and what it's supposed to do. So this is an online car rental system, and in general, it allows customers to check the availability of cars, uh, provide the customers of the rental charges, and even allow them to reserve a car online. Um, we collected uh, the input output processes, performance, and control characteristics of the system. And we're looking at here at inputs. For example, a customer can enter rental requirements, output. Uh, number three, for example, system should provide invoice if customer reserves a car, and so on. In the heart of data flow diagrams are really the processes. So looking here at the four processes is very important. Remember, when we draw our data flow diagrams, it's nothing but a bunch of processes uh, that are connected to entities and uh, uh, to data stores to, uh, to save data. They are connected using uh, the arrows or the data flows. So basically looking at inputs, outputs, and processes, we pretty much can develop our uh, uh, data flow diagrams. This is also additional requirements that we collected. It's a website, so we care about performance, how many concurrent users, the speed, of course, control is always very important in such system in terms of security using SSL. Uh, remember, there's a payment online, so we had to have to take care of the credit card information and uh, other confidential data. Okay, uh, having said that, this is a very simplistic example. A lot of details I'm not looking at. Uh, again, the purpose of this example is simply to explain how to create data flow diagrams. So have that in mind. Another thing to remember is that now you do know the rules of DFDs. Based on these rules, uh, you're simply translating the system's requirement into uh, the logical model of the system represented by data flow diagrams, okay? And I call it translation because if you know the language of DFD, then this is exactly what you're doing. Okay, we will start with uh, step one, which is to draw the context diagram of the system. Context diagram is simply the system itself as a single process. That means when we draw the context diagram, we will have only one process, and it's called process zero. Remember, the top compartment of our process symbol is reserved for the number of the process, and here you see it's zero. 
this should be a very clear and descriptive name of your system it's an online car rental system I will also note at this point that this is a violation the only violation of the process name rule because we said the processes always sound like do something uh, for example calculate grade okay but this specific process is not really a process it's the system itself okay so you can think of it as a very big black box that we don't understand how it works but we know it's our system okay so it is the name of our system and the trick here is to have a clear name of your system okay knowing our system then we need to identify the external entities the objects other systems that communicate with our system okay this can be a person it can be a department it can be uh, a bank it can be another system in our particular car rental system we have the customer we have the bank and we have the garage now remember this is uh, this can be confusing at some point because these external entities they actually use a computer they interact with the system directly so if you think uh, for uh, about a uh, point of sale system like the one you have in a big supermarket the customer is not really using the system it's that person is that cashier who's using the system itself in a shop the customer is not using the system there is a computer system but it's the uh, uh, person who works there the employee is the one using the system so external entities are actual objects or people that are communicating directly with the system in our case for example here the customer is giving something to the system remember it's a website so definitely the customer and getting something back from the system the bank is providing the authorization for credit card is receiving something and giving something to the system and the garage also provide us with which car is available and so on so also there is a direct communication the third step and this is really where the work begins in the context diagram is to identify the data flows that connect these external entities to your system okay so you're looking at inputs outputs you're looking at data that is going from the system to an entity and vice versa so let us start if we take a look at this part of our uh, website we can see that this is the part where the customer provides so I highlighted here the customer underlined uh, they provide his or her rental requirements and by rental requirements it can be a combination of things as you see here I can choose my uh, pickup date and time okay the return this is when I return the car date and time I can choose the location also okay so in a data flow diagram you don't have to mention all of them you can collect them all okay in a single data flow whenever you can and later as we will learn in the uh, data uh, dictionary we can expand that but at this point just think of it as the customer providing so it's an input to the system renter requirements okay and this is represented in a context diagram uh, as an arrow as a data flow going from the customer to the system look at the name of the data flow is not customer entering or enter or provide rental requirements no it's simply the piece of data the piece of information that is moving from here to here remember no verbs on the data flow on the arrow 